everyone welcome back to my channel before we jump into the video i have a quick channel announcement so next year on the weekend of friday january 15th i will be attending asna anya the virtual conference and if you guys don't already know asna i think it stands for actuarial students national association and it's basically this big networking conference they host seminars for students in canada and it's basically like a big career fair so I will be attending ASNA as a student ambassador for my company. In addition to that, I will be attending on behalf of the International Association of Black Actuaries and I'll be giving some form of seminar that I need to go and plan. Um, I'll be doing that as well or maybe one of my team members. Anyways, I just thought I would take the opportunity to one, if you're in Canada, I want to remind you guys to sign up. This is an easy way. Okay, I won't say easy, but this is a good way to get your foot out there, see what the actuarial field is like. This is actually what re-sparked my whole love for actuarial science because I had considered switching, not really, but I had considered it and this kind of brought me back down to earth. So I think it's one, a good place for you guys to go for motivation, two, a good place for you guys to go to network, and three, potentially find a job. So one, I remind you, you guys to sign up for it, two, I am going to be running a series of videos in December where I'm going to give you guys some information and tips and advice, not from me, but from recruiters and other professionals that I'm going to reach out to. So if you guys have any questions at all regarding setting yourself up for a virtual interview or what your background should look like or do's and don'ts for online networking and what to say to a recruiter when you go up to them, especially since everything's going to be virtual, things may be a bit more intimidating, you will be speaking to recruiters one-on-one -on -one more often possibly. So if you guys have any questions at all, let me know in the comment section. I'll be asking all my professional friends to help me out so you get true advice that someone that's gonna hire you would you know would give you and yeah I hope it can be really beneficial I think I'll be creating content for like resume building and again networking do's and don'ts and how to get the perfect setup what recruiters like to see and all of that stuff so yeah if you have any questions leave them down below and let's jump into the video Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kiana. If you don't already know, I'm a final year student at McMaster University and I currently work part-time at a life insurance firm here in Canada as an actuarial intern. So in today's video, I was gonna actually talk to you guys about what my part-time internship experience has been like. I hopped on Instagram to ask you guys to submit any additional questions you would have had for me aside from what I had planned to talk about. And I got questions about what my internship experience has been like in general. So today we're going to be doing a Q&A, actuarial intern Q&A, ask me anything, I guess. I only posted the story a few um, hours ago. So if I don't get to all the questions, maybe I'll just answer the rest of them in a vlog. But yeah, I'm just going to go with what I have for now. So before I start, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. I make videos about my life college life, actuarial content, and productivity in general. So yeah, if you'd like to see more, subscribe, stick around. If this video is helpful, hit the like button and let us jump into the video. So the first question I have is what is it that I even do? So I guess I'll speak to what I do currently. I work on a team that does model development and updates and stuff like that. So what that really means is my team, we work with a lot of Excel and Excel VBA and we use coding and tools in Excel to basically make models run more efficiently, run smoothly, run faster. So constantly debugging and updating and finding ways to make things run more efficiently, smoothly for the customer within our company that uses these models. Question two is how did I get my part-time internship? So I got my part-time internship in the same way that I know many other of my friends have, which is basically they worked at the company full time and then they, they asked for the part-time opportunity, which is what I basically did as well. I worked at the company for three semesters full time and in this fourth semester, I was like, wow, I need a job, but I didn't want to work on the front lines because of COVID. So I shot my shot and said, hey, um, would it be possible for me to work part-time here and blah, blah, blah. You know, if you ask for opportunities like that, 
and I, I'm just gonna emphasize that to be an intern working part-time is usually an opportunity because most companies have not yet made the full switch into hiring people part-time and companies are gonna start doing that in the future. Don't bank it on what I'm saying, but I know that's gonna happen. But for now, it doesn't happen often, even worse for interns, it's not something common. So if you're given the opportunity to work part-time, be a good worker. Anyway, so the point is I reached out, I asked if I could get the opportunity. They looked into talking to people I've worked with in the past and all that stuff and here I am today. <laughs> Question three, how does working part-time compare to working full-time? If I'm being very honest, it doesn't feel any different. It feels as if I work a four day work week. Um, yeah, it's sometimes it gets hard balancing school and work, but that's just because school is like, you know, um, but yeah, it feels the same. What has it been like working virtually? I feel like I made a whole video on this or I probably put it in a vlog. It, it's i've gotten used to it kind of now i must say networking virtually isn't that big of an issue for me only because i talk so much within my team of course the issue comes in with how you would have been able to meet people outside of your department obviously i haven't been able to do that as much and especially because i'm part-time i'm not always available to take part in some of the the group activities that are organized and i do feel really sad about stuff like that but overall being virtual sorry being virtual especially since i finally have a desk set up you know i worked out like i'm in my bedroom right now and i do my school work in my bedroom at my desk which is right behind the camera but when i work for my company i work downstairs partly because i have to because of the ethernet cable but also it's just nice to know that you know it, it's as if downstairs in my office like i have all of that set up so the whole virtual thing like my commute is like a minute i roll out of my bed i run downstairs and i enjoy my life you know and i come back upstairs and i i'm back home i guess it's been fine <laughs> question five how did you know you wanted to go into actuarial science so i always knew i wanted to go into axa i actually decided when i was age 14 um it was introduced to me really young and i don't know like i always hated reading i hated bio i hated chem i hated physics because physics is way harder than math i don't know i don't know but it's true and i just math came easily it came it like because the thing is for math i feel like once you learn it once you read the paragraph the first time and it tells you how to get the answer it's just about practicing and it's just kind of fun i used to treat it like a game so math just came more easily to me whereas like me sitting down trying to memorize those organic chem equations it just was not happening so yeah i just i knew math was the the easiest way for me to go <laughs> number six what are some trends you've noticed within your field Question eight, what advice would you give your younger self? I think the young me, she was, she was chill. I really, I don't know. I think the young me, I think I'm still the young me. I'm still trying to figure my life out and here I am making YouTube videos and talking about my work. So shit. <laughs> Question nine, do you see yourself doing it as a full-time job in the future? Yes and no. Um, so I'll, I'll put it in this way. I, like I said to you guys, I feel as if companies are going to start giving people the opportunity to work part-time as actuaries. I don't think that's gonna happen right, right now, but I think it will happen in the future. I know someone in consulting, she's a consulting actuary and she works part-time and then she runs her own business on the side. I would love to do that ideally because one, I think I've just spent so much of my life like coming towards this path that I know for a really long time I'm gonna do it because it just feels like a lot of efforts wasted and I don't really see the field as something, aside from the coding, like there isn't that much that I feel like is really transferable unless I'm going into like engineering or something still within like the whole like technical field. So ideally, yes, I, I do want to do full time, but 
eventually I would like to do two things. Least favorite part of the job. As of right now, I don't even want to say the coding, but it is the coding. I know once I get to the other side, once I get to the end of the tunnel, it'll be fine. It's just that for right now, I'm just not a fan. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Um, I think ideally I would love to have the opportunity to work from anywhere. I think obviously COVID has shown companies, especially traditional companies that usually don't like making those big switches and pivots and stuff. It's really shown them that people can still do productive work from all over. Um, and I would love to have the opportunity to, you know, take myself up and be an actuary and say, I want to live in like Spain for a month or two or five or whatever. And I don't know, I feel like, again, it kind of comes back to when I said I don't like being stuck doing the same thing in the same position all the time. I think that's the only thing that limits me with not being an actuary, but working nine to five. I don't want to sit and have to always like come home and get ready and go to work and come back and sleep and get ready and go to work and come back and sleep. It's just like, I don't want to do that. So five years from now, I would hope to have the opportunity to be living my life and like still be an actuary and stuff like that. Final question, and I should have opened with one of these questions, is what actuarial route do you want to take? Which I assume this person is referring to whether I want to work in life insurance or if I want to work in PNC or if I want to work in um, consulting. Um, initially, I really wanted to work in like consulting and like work with investments and stuff like that. Um, you can actually still do stuff like that within a life insurance company. Um, there's an insurance side and then there's an investment side and that typically just goes to the fact that there are insurance products that you can have side accounts and invest in. So I want to kind of explore the wealth side within my company, I guess, and see what that side is like. Um, but yeah, so those are all the questions I have for you guys. I saw three more come in, but I have a class that starts in a few minutes, so I really have to go. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it was really helpful. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please comment down below what stage in your actuarial journey you are, AKA, are you in high school? Are you in university? Are you like, did you graduate but you haven't started working yet? Or are you already working? I kind of just want to know who my audience is because obviously YouTube isn't giving me insights about your actuarial journey but yeah i would love to know who watches these videos and yeah thank you guys so much i'll see you next time goodbye Oof. Oof. Ah, shit my butt hurts Ooh.